Great news, Hugo. We do operate in your area. When would you like to schedule the quote appointment? What's your preferred date and time? Um, to be honest, could we do next week, say like Tuesday at 9 a.m.? Hold on a sec. All right, Hugo, I've got you down for next Tuesday at 9 a.m. And there we go. Now we have a quote with Hugo at 9 a.m booked on our calendar. For service-based businesses, inbound calls are crucial for success. Yet many of these calls end up being dead ends. And at a certain scale, having to answer and identify legitimate leads from all those calls becomes extremely time consuming. With the progression in generative AI technology, it provides us the infrastructure needed in order to automate this entire calling process while still maintaining a natural human-like conversation. Not only that, but these AI voice agents are live 24 seven, meaning that you'll never miss an opportunity again. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you step by step through building your own AI voice agent from start to finish. And if you're worried about not knowing how to code, don't be, as this entire system will be built using no code tools. Okay, I'm gonna start off by just briefly talking about the plan of this uh, AI voice agent. So I wanted to build this voice agent specifically for service-based businesses, whether that be junk removal, plumbing, pest control, roofing, tree removal, or pool cleaning. These types of services need to be on their phone a lot in order to answer and I guess entertain potential leads and actually see where that's gonna go. So these inbound AI phone agents will be really valuable for those types of businesses. Now the agent I've built is specifically for junk removal services. It doesn't matter too much what service you're using that just needs to be changed in the prompts. However, the way that I've structured this call flow to look like is that when someone calls the number, the bot will basically collect the name and email. Then it'll ask them like, what types of junk do you actually need removed? Let's say whether that is a dishwasher, some wooden pallets, just some junk, whatever that is. And then the client will obviously answer and then it'll ask for the location. And now this is where we're gonna do something a little bit different as you know say someone calls and you get their location and it ends up that you've booked a free quote but these things are just not accessible as they're three four hours away by drive so what we're going to do is when the location is collected we're basically going to send that to a tool to check that how far the distance is from the main like office location of our junk service and if it's under an hour we um, we'll organize a free quote. So we'll just be like, okay, we can come around, um, you know, to see how much this will cost. Would you be interested? And if so, um, you know, when are you available for a quote? And then we book that in. And then if it's over an hour, we simply say, unfortunately, your location doesn't qualify into where we work, our service area. So um, look for someone else, basically. Now I'm going to start off this tutorial in a platform called Vapi. This is the actual provider and infrastructure of these AI voice agents being the voice capabilities of it and actually like the phone number side of things. And then the other tool we're gonna be using is a platform called make.com. As you can see, I have my two uh, tools here, quote book and distance check. I'll talk about them more in detail later. So if we go into Vapi, the first thing you need to do is basically build out your prompt. So my prompt was very simple. I'll explain it to you in a second. Uh, first of all, I just started off with a first message being, hello, this is Mary from Junkwise. How can I assist you today? Now, the way that I built this system prompt was pretty simple. I actually just created an assistant. And what we're basically doing is building a form of appointment setter. As you can see, even the assistant name is the same. And what I just did was created the assistant. And then I just took this prompt structure and basically just changed it and just changed it a little bit for what we're doing as you know, I'm not building a voice assistant for a dental office, but instead a junk removal service. So as you can see, you're a voice assistant for Junkwise. This is just a random junk removal service I found in London and I took their location just to um, act as if this is actually a bot for this company. Uh, a junk removal business located at Nine Sunny Hill House, London. The hours, I explained what hours it's open. Uh, Junkwise provides junk removal service to the lo local London community. You are tasked with answering questions about the business and booking quotes. If someone wants to book a quote, your goal is to gather necessary information from callers in a friendly and casual manner like this. And then what we do is give it a step-by-step -step, like process of how to actually do this. So ask for their full name, ask what type of items need to be removed, ask for their postcode, 
use distance check to see if the distance qualifies for service. If yes, request their preferred date and time for the quote appointment using quote book. If no, say unfortunately we don't operate in your location. Confirm all details with the caller, including the date and time of the quote appointment. Use quote book to book in the confirmed quote appointment. There's nothing else they needs to do because if it if they don't qualify, we don't book. If they do qualify, we book a quote and that's that. Then I just put a little part, which was just keep responses short and simple. And this is in the prompt template of the other um, agent as well. And then I just gave it um, a little description of the tools that it has. That being distance check, checks if the prospect postcode postcode is within Junkwise's service area. Quote book, books a quote appointment, date and time with Junkwise. So that's really all we need. And I've tested this um, agent already and I know it's working perfectly. So a simple prompt like that can get the job done. Now, if you are putting these assistants into production, I would recommend just a little bit more stress testing with prompts, making sure that it's really not making any sort of mistakes, which will make the prompt probably double in size. It'll probably increase your cost by say, yeah, there we go, three cents for double the size, which is not that much considering that your output will be a lot better. Now I've also chucked it on the GPT 4.0 cluster because the 305 model is only two cents less, which is just not worth it for me. I think the 4.0 cluster really helps with the outputs and I'm gonna chuck the temperature to 0 0.5. Then the transcriber, which is basically the software that we're using to transcribe whatever the person is saying over the phone. Uh, we're just gonna use the default, which is DeepGram. Language is gonna be English and the model is Nova 2. Then if we go to the voice configuration, the provider I'm gonna be using is 11 Labs. It has one of the most realistic sounding voice. In my opinion, OpenAI's voice is a little bit better. However, OpenAI's voice has a latency of 800 MS, which in my opinion is just too much to make the conversation sound natural. So 11 Labs is, a hot, is 400 MS less. And therefore with that change, it really makes a difference to how the conversation flows and the voices of 11 labs are really good. Anyway, down in this additional configuration, I'm going to make this slightly more stable, meaning that it doesn't um, exaggerate uh, its voices that much because 11 labs um, voices like to really emphasize emotions and it's just a bit too much for me and it seems almost programmed so I wanted to make it a little bit more stable. I'm going to skip over functions for now as I'm going to go over functions at the same time as I'm going over the make.com scenarios and I can just go to advanced. In advanced I'm going to put this to zero, zero. I don't think that even changes anything. Uh, nothing else needs to be changed in either advanced or analysis as I'm not um, needing to summarize the call or check if the call is successful. Yes, I could check if the call is successful by saying, oh, did they book a quote? If they did book a quote, yes, we could say that it is successful. But right now, this isn't actually in production and I don't particularly need to do that. Okay, so if I go into functions, the reason why I'm not doing these functions via tool is because the tools don't wait for the um, response from the webhook, which is needed in these scenarios. Okay, I'm gonna start off by explaining how I built distance check as this is the first tool that the um, agent actually uses. To build this tool, you're gonna just create a custom webhook and then this is the server URL that we pasted into this custom function right here. This is the server URL that I have under distance check. As you can see, MI, and if we check MI, and basically this just means that the agent will send the postcode property to this server URL. And then this is when we manipulate that postcode to check, oh, how far is that? Then we give the webhook response, the location of the prospect is in the service area of Junkwise, or if it isn't, the location of the prospect is not in the service area of Junkwise. And then that's when the agent will basically be like, yep, yeah, sorry, you're not in the service area, or yes, perfect. When can we book a quote appointment? So in order to do this, I'm using the Google Maps get a distance matrix API. So I've st I've put in the origin, which is basically where we're starting off the drive um, as the uh, as the office of Junkwise. And then the uh, destination is simply the postcode that we get from the agent. The travel mode is obviously driving. And I'm I also made the departure time now, meaning that we can get like live traffic data so that if it is actually gonna be um, one hour on a perfect, you know, 9 p.m., let's say roads are uh, completely empty, then it only takes 45 minutes. But in the day, which is when we operate, it takes two hours because of traffic. Uh, 
then we obviously don't want to drive there because it's in fact taking two hours. And if it's the first time you're creating a Google Maps connection, what you have to do is log in or sign up to Google Cloud and then create a new project. And then the next thing you need to do is basically, so as you can see, I have this test project and then you have to go into APIs and services and basically enable a bunch of different APIs. So that is geocoding, maps elevation, time zone directions, distance matrix, map static, places, geolocation, and roads. And then only once you have all those APIs enabled, like you can see, I have this geolocation API enabled, etc. Then you go into these APIs and services, credentials, and then just create an API key up here, create credentials. I'm not gonna actually create it because I already have one. Then you'll just chuck it into this API key connection and press save. Apart from that, that's all you need. What I've done is basically created a filter, which is the duration in traffic dot value, which is basically how many seconds it will take, like right now to drive to the postcode that we get from the agent. And if it is less than 3,600, which is less than an hour, then we can say, yes, it qualifies. And if it is more, we say, no, it doesn't qualify. Now, if I move to the quote book custom function that we've built, um, we have three properties, that being the date, postcode, and first name. So if we go into the quote book scenario and we look at the way that this is structured, this is a little bit more complex because we actually need to use a completion step. I basically want to offload as much thinking and um, reasoning needed for these agents as they really should just be uh, focusing on getting a good flowing conversation, not having to format dates and stuff like that. So I've basically made the way that this date property is sent to be something like next Thursday at 10 a.m. or June 6th at 5 p.m. I don't want it sending me this like, you know, formatted date. I basically, I'm getting this open AI step to do that for me. So as you can see, um, you are a date formatter. Your job is to take a date that is said in natural language and to then format it to this format year, year, month, month, date, date, time. And then I've given it an, an example. And then I've just given it a note, which is you must not add any comments. The must output must only contain the formatted date. And I've tested this agent already. And I know that it gives me the right format and it is perfect for what I want. Then we actually take that formatted date and we basically chuck that in as the start date for this Google Calendar event. We name this event quote with, and then the first name, which we get from this property first name, which is just the first name of the prospect. And then the postcode, which we get earlier on by asking and checking the distance, we chuck it in location so that the workers at Junkwise know where to actually travel in order to do this quote. I've not changed anything else apart from making the duration 30 minutes because I don't think realistically um, the Junkwise employees will need any more than 30 minutes of duration in order to um, get a quote set up. Then what we do is event created and then what we'll actually do is change this to status. And then we can press save and we run both these scenarios like you can see on. If I go into history and just show you what these scenarios look like when they're running, I am gonna be calling this agent in a second and showing to you what it looks like live. It will basically receive these parameters from the voice agent, date being tomorrow at 11 a.m. Postcode, I'm gonna blur out because that is actually my real postcode and first name being Hugo. Then it takes that um, date being tomorrow at 11 a.m., creates that, for formats that, formats that into the correct format so if we go into the content as you can see 2024 06 20 time 11 a.m which is perfect then we chuck that into the calendar and then we respond back with um, successfully created okay now the last thing we need to do in order to get this agent to actually be able to pick up phone calls when i ring it is go into phone numbers import a phone number that being through twilio and in order to do that in twilio you just sign up to a twilio account and basically get a free phone number, paste in that phone number that you've got. Mine was a UK number because I signed up in the UK. The account SID, paste your own in and your own auth token, and then just label this phone number, whatever. I labeled mine UK number. Then you're gonna select the assistant that is basically gonna pick up when this phone number is rang. And so I'm obviously gonna make this the Mary assistant, which we created for Junkwise. 
and then you're good to go. Okay, so now I'm just gonna dial this number to see if the assistant is working correct. Hello, this is Mary from Junkwise. How can I assist you today? Hi there, I wanted to uh, get a quote on some junk that I have to um, get rid of. Sure thing, I can help with that. Can I get your full name, please? Yeah, my name is uh, Hugo Podvorsky. Thanks, Hugo. What kind of items do you need to get rid of? I just have like some wood pallets. I think there's a dishwasher to get rid of and then just like other bits and bobs I had in my garage. Got it. And what's your postcode? It is SW23BB. This will just take a sec. Great news, Hugo. We do operate in your area. When would you like to schedule the quote appointment? What's your preferred date and time? Um, to be honest, could we do next week, say like Tuesday at 9 a.m.? Hold on a sec. All right, Hugo, I've got you down for next Tuesday at 9 a.m. Just to confirm, name Hugo Podvorsky, items, wood pallets, a dishwasher and other garage bits and bobs. Postcode SW23BB. Quote appointment next Tuesday at 9 a.m. Does that all sound good? That sounds perfect. Awesome. You're all set, Hugo. We'll see you next Tuesday at 9 a.m. If you need anything else, just give us a shout. Have a great day. You too. Goodbye. And there we go. Now we have a quote with Hugo at 9 a.m. booked on our calendar. So as you can see, that was a perfectly flowing call. Exactly what we need. Give me a second, let me check if you um, your distance qualifies, let me book you in for the appointment. And that's really all we need to do as this agent is now live uh, listening to inbound calls. It is able to um, answer 10 calls at a time. And as you heard from the voice, it is extremely realistic sounding. Like I could genuinely couldn't tell that that was an AI because I chose the best provider for the voice. So yeah, that's really it from me. And if you want a system like this to be built for your business, you can go on my business's website, Artillo AI, and book a call through there. And then we can basically see whether the idea that you have for your AI agent or your AI solution is able to be done by us. And if so, then we will help you with that. Okay, bye.